Yo guys, how's it going? Otaku Ops here. First of all, Happy New Year. Uh, just get that out of the way. And today I'm wearing a shirt of a flag of Mongolia because we're gonna talk about Chinggis Khan. And I don't mean the dish, I mean the 93 DOS game released by Koei. I'm gonna talk about the DOS game and I'm also gonna mention the Steam version. Now, the Steam version is only available in Japanese, so I had to get a translator to help me with the options. Uh, it's actually very similar, uh, but I'll point out certain differences. And uh, yeah, there's just really one major difference. This is gonna be another how to play video. So I'm gonna go through all the buttons. I'm gonna explain what they do and how to play the game. Uh, we're gonna look at a battle as well. So yeah, uh, stay tuned.
Okay, so welcome to Chinggis Khan 2 on DOS. And so let's start a new game, first of all. Uh, just want to go quickly through the menu here. Resume a saved game is obviously if you save the game. Uh, the World Conquest data, I'm not sure what it means. I, I knew before because I, I tested it, but right now I don't remember, so I'll skip it for now. Let's start a new game. And uh, I just want to briefly explain to you how this works here. The first one, Conquest of Mongolia, is actually the map you see right now on the screen. Uh, it's basically Mongolia broken up into various provinces, right? And uh, you'll start in one province, uh, controlled by uh, Chinggis Khan, or Tiemuchin, as his name was before. And you basically have to conquer the entirety of Mongolia. So you can do that by conquest, or and I think you can do that by certain states uh, becoming your vassals, although I'm not really sure about that. Uh, the cool thing about the first episode is that if you complete it, uh, you can move on you have to beat it as quickly as possible, though. That's the thing. Like, time is kind of a limit. So, yeah, you have to do it as quickly as possible. Make sure you make children. I'll explain to you how you do that later. And then when you move into the second game later, you can actually reuse the generals from the first scenario. So if you really like some of the guys in the first scenario, you can reuse them for the world conquest. And maybe that's what it means in the beginning menu. So maybe that's it. I'm not sure, though. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's kind of the unique thing about this game, is that you can reuse these generals. Anyway, at least here you, you can choose, I think, up to two players or four players. I'm not, I'm not really sure. But anyway, remember in L'Empereur, they didn't have that option. You were, you were stuck with the French, and that's very unfortunate, because I really wanted to play at some other factions, and it was not, not available. So we're gonna choose a new game, and I'm gonna choose the third scenario. Um, I'll explain why later. And we're gonna play as one player, and we're gonna play as the Yuan Dynasty, which is by Kublai Khan. So this is already after Chinggis Khan, but I'm doing this specifically because you already have many countries here. So you click on yes. Uh, you don't need to view battles in other countries. You can, but it's pretty boring. It's pretty long. So uh, click on no. Uh, the, the combat scenes though, yeah, sure, why not? And you can choose a hostile or intellectual AI strategy. Um, let's go for intellectual, but I'm not going to play the game. I'm just going to show you a little bit of the menu. So you click on yes. Now it's your turn. So you start in, uh, in parts of China, I believe. Okay, so from the top, you have the menu bar here, okay? So all the Koei games are pretty similar in that they have some kind of command bar, and this is it. The first option is policy and decree. Now this one I don't really understand because from what I get, each country already has a predecided AI policy, so it's it's kind of producing something by its own. Uh, maybe that's not actually the case. Maybe you do need to make a new policy every time you invade a new country. It's very possible. In that case, you choose decree, and it will let you adjust um, how you use the population in that country. For example. Uh, do you want more people for the economy, or farming, or building defenses, if you need that? Um, and yeah, so you do that. Uh, change is just, okay, you have a policy in place, and you need to change it, to tweak it a little bit, then that's the option for you. Next one is advisor. I think this one, if, you, if I had an advisor, right now I don't have one, but if I had one, I could ask him to draft a policy in my place. So if I feel lazy, uh, if I don't want to do that myself, I ask my advisor to do it, and then I just click on agree, right? And uh, delegate, so this one I don't really understand. I think it needs an advisor within a certain country, and then you can ask him to basically run the show. I'm not really sure about that, but I think that's what it does. Uh, next one is order menu. So this is only available if you have more than one country, okay? If you don't have more, then that option will not be allowed for you. 
here it's basically very simple. You can issue orders to your other um, commanders, for example, to attack or to move resources or uh, to send, oh, move, I think move troops, that's what it means here. Send, send resources probably. And diplomacy is if you want them to ask a, another, a neighboring country to either surrender or pay a tribute. Um, honestly, with this game, the uh, tribute often doesn't really work, but sometimes it does, and you can get easy money just by threatening others. Uh, next one is personnel. So here you can uh, appoint a governor. So, you know, if you don't like a certain person somewhere, you can replace him. Maybe they have a better uh, politics factor or something like that. Maybe they have more body points, which I'll explain later. Advisor is the same, so you can appoint an advisor. Make sure that the politics um, is, is good, at least B. Uh, a, of course, is fantastic, but A is pretty rare. Uh, definitely go at least with B. Uh, next one is general. So yeah, this one is basically just promoting a general. This, these are usually very bad though. Like I'm talking like they're usually D or I think uh, even E if that if that's possible. I'm not entirely remembering this game, but they are usually very very bad. And you only do that if you really really need um, just people to fill the numbers, you know. Next one is Prince. So this is actually your kids. Uh, if you have a child which is 10 years old, like basically as soon as they turn 10, you can enlist them in the army. And usually this, this depends on the strength of your leader. But if your leader is pretty good, then the chances are your children will have pretty high abilities as well. Uh, there's an interesting trick here. Uh, if, okay, let's go back to the second scenario for a second. You play as Chinggis Khan, right? So let's say you have a kid, it's a boy. You can actually name that boy Kublai Khan. Make sure that you spell it exactly as we see it right now. And later, when he turns 10, he actually is going to have the avatar of Kublai Khan. Uh, I'm not sure if it works all the time, but I, in my case, it worked all the time, which is pretty funny. Uh, the next one is princess. So you can also have kids who are girls. And in that case, you can marry them off to your generals. And in that, that means that one of your generals will become your relative and they will not betray you. So you have to be very careful in this game because some generals are actually traitors. And if you... In battle, it's okay, it's fine. They will fight just fine. But if they're a governor, they're often gonna um, not follow orders and eventually they're just gonna break off from your empire and then you have to attack them and defeat them. Uh, you can actually rehire them, but you know it's a traitor. He's gonna, he's gonna do it again. So the only choice is to execute them. And the last option is family. So in the DOS version, uh, there's only one thing that happens here is that, yeah, you spend time with your wife, right? And uh, there is a kind of number generator that gets enabled. Often nothing will happen, nothing at all. But from time to time, you basically will have sex with your wife. And that means that uh, she will get pregnant and later you will have a boy or a girl, right? I will come back to this later because in the Steam version, this is a little bit different, uh, better, I would say. Uh, so yeah, just stay tuned for that. But this is all you have to know here for the DOS version. Okay, next one is military. So here uh, you can attack somebody, so use war. You can move troops, uh, send, send resources. It's basically the same as the order menu here. Uh, draft means to recruit new troops. Train, obviously you have to increase their training. I think the higher the training, the the more uh, mobility they have, so the, the more they can move around, etc. So you really need that. And it's easy, it's kind of free, you don't need to buy anything for it. And dismiss is basically, yeah, if you don't need certain troops, you can, you can get rid of them and re hire some, you know, higher quality troops, basically. Next one is the domestic menu. 
So here we have a uh, labor so you can readjust your labor force, you know, whether it's going into economy, etc. I believe that's it. Uh, yeah, the allocation of labor, right. So I'm going to click on cancel because I don't need to do that. Uh, give is give something to the population. In this game, uh, if you look here, it says sup. Uh, it's actually for support. Uh, it means popular support, which right now is 83, very high, very, very high. I don't need to worry about that. But I think when support starts to drop below 50, that's when you have to start worrying a little bit. And in that case, you need to give your population something. I think you can give them gold, uh, food maybe, and pr probably resources like fur or ceramics or whatever you have at the moment. Of course, the better quality, uh, the more points you're going to get. It's important to get support, but it's also... Um, it depends on the population. If the population is, is quite high, it takes more resources to raise the popular support, right? It's easier to raise it in a small population. And finally, you can tax. So uh, if you do that, people are really going to dislike you. The support is going to drop. Uh, but you're going to get some resources, and that's very useful in very tight spots. Maybe you suddenly need gold and food, and, you know, um, sometimes there is no choice, right? Or you intentionally do that to kind of ruin a country because, yeah, you get the resources and then you move out, right? So that's up to you how to use it. Okay, the next one is diplomacy, and this one is pretty easy. Uh, you can uh, send somebody to ask somebody to surrender, which in my case never really worked. I think it, it works in some cases, but it's pretty rare. Uh, you can ask them to pay a tribute, so basically you threaten somebody. Hey. Uh, you know, give me money or I'm gonna attack. Uh, sometimes it works, so you'll get decent money, uh, but it's not really worth doing in the long run. And finally, alliance. When you start the game, especially when you only have one country or one province, you really need to build strong alliances. So what I usually go for is five to six years, because then if they accept, I don't have to worry about them for five or six years, which is a long time. And in, in those years, I can really build up my economy, build up my army, etc., etc. So this is useful. Uh, the next one is the market. Uh, this is probably... Okay, yep. So he, uh, the guy says there are no merchants in this territory. And that's because um, I think if you click on info, uh, merchant... You can, for example, uh, choose Uyghur, right? And it will show you where that merchant is. You cannot trade if there is no merchant in your province, right? So you have to wait until... And they do move around. Every turn, they move around the map. All of them, actually. The Chinese as well. Chinese is there. Islamic is there. And Venetian is, well, in Italy right now. But they do move around, okay? So... And, and their, their uh, rates are different. Uh, there are certain things you can sell, uh, like the Venetians, for example. They need certain materials. Um, they'll pay you more money than, say, a Chinese merchant. So you have to be careful here what you trade and who you trade with. But anyway, right now I can't trade because there is no merchant in my province. But basically, you if he was there, uh, you could sell something, you could buy something. And you can also hire mercenaries. So this is very interesting because if you play as Japan, Japan, you can only hire samurais. They don't, you can't hire any other troop types. But if a merchant comes there, you can hire mercenaries. So for example, if a European merchant comes over, you can hire knights. Now, this is so like wild because imagine like, European knights, right, in full armor, etc., fighting in Japan, for example, and then invading China, for example. This is, this would be so wild, but it is possible in this game. And finally, the last three are info, options, and rest. Rest is basically, yeah, you're done, so you just move on to the next turn. Uh, and we're gonna actually look at a battle now. So the way you do that is you go to military, war. He asks you where you want to invade. In this case, it's actually really good on the map because 
my province number five is completely protected. So by myself in this case, uh, there is no uh, bridge to Korea. There is no bridge to Japan. So I can completely unleash all my army on province 12. Uh, he asks me if I want to command the army myself. I'm going to click yes. And I'm going to form the legions myself as well. So I'm going to, uh, for myself, I'm going to obviously pick Mongols. I only have three units, unfortunately, but that's okay. Uh, you really have to study the generals who you have. Like right now, I, I don't know any of these guys, actually. So I don't know their attributes. But anyway, I'm going to go for this guy. Uh, let's put Lancers, um, Catapult, Catapult, and Crossbow. That's good enough. I mean, I could use more, but it's just to show you guys how much gold you want to take. Uh, quite a lot in this case. And how much food. It's just like in L'Empereur, you want to take as much as possible. So we're going to go for maximum. And you click OK. Launch the invasion. Uh, your wife says good luck. And uh, that's it. You start the battle. Okay, so the battle in Chinggis Khan 2 is in two phases. This is the first phase, and it asks me here if I want to deploy my army. I'm going to click yes. Uh, this is, first of all, it's my legion. I'm going to put him here, let's say, and legion 2 there. They give a, a small speech. Sorry, I'm kind of hiding uh, part of the dialogue there, but that's okay. It's not really important. So this view here is kind of the overview battle mode. So it's, um, yeah, it's, you're basically only seeing the generals here. And uh, again, you can order them, you can reform. Um, okay, so the talk is basically a bit like the diplomacy menu. You can ask your enemy to surrender. Sometimes if they're really, really weak compared to you, uh, they will actually accept. And then the cool thing about it is that you get all the units uh, that surrender. So it's kind of free units, it's great. Uh, reform is good if you have two legions. Uh, remember to have one legion, let's say three units out of four. So you leave a gap there. So that way you can, you can move units from one to another. You can actually replenish your army that way. It's very useful. And I'm gonna go with orders. I'm gonna order Legion One. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not really sure about some of these options here, but um, I'm gonna choose Blitz. No, actually, I'm gonna choose Chase, and I'm gonna go for their leader. So Legion One is always the leader. Um, and I'm not gonna give orders to Legion Two, although I could, I guess. But nah, I'm gonna, not gonna do that. And I'm gonna choose End. So yes, and immediately I attack. And now we go into battle mode. So now we see individual units. So I'm gonna just place my army first. Let's go here, 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 and here. So yeah, uh, again, options very simple here. You can move, you can attack, uh, you can order, which means um, you can lead the battle. Uh, this is not very useful. Uh, revive is very useful though because from time to time your units lose morale and if they lose too much morale they become uh, disorganized which means that you can't control them anymore and they also take a lot more casualties so to recover them it's basically like in l'empereur you recover units you do revive here uh, sometimes it doesn't work but anyway you have to try because you can't leave them uh, in a struggling order for too long. I'm just going to move forward a little bit, let's say here, and uh, you have to wait. I might have moved a little bit too far, I will explain why in a second, so I'm just going to keep moving for now, let's say here, and uh, wait. Alright, so if I attack, uh, let's go with far. Far means archers. Archers have bows, so that means you can attack far. Right now, in that zone of influence, there's nobody there. So I have to move a little bit. Still can't reach anybody. Okay. 
All right, I have to move very carefully here. So just one step further. And now I can reach Legion 4 in this case. So you click that, they're gonna, uh, you can, you can see your mobility here. This is how many points you have left, so be careful. So you, you shoot them and you move back. That way you're immune. They, they will not move, that's the thing. I will explain that in a bit. Do the same here, just move one step forward. Uh, they have very high defense here, by the way. I'm barely causing damage here. Uh, when you're fighting in China, China has very high defenses, so yeah. Anyway, uh, you do that and move back. One square is enough. Uh, I'm not gonna do this one. And this is Lancers, they don't have bows. So, this is what I wanted to point out. Usually when the AI defends a town, in this case, um, he, he doesn't really move out of the castle. Well, this is kind of obvious because if you're inside the wall, you get the defense bonus. If you move outside, you lose that bonus. And then you're vulnerable. But in this case, it's kind of interesting because I can basically keep moving forward one, for, one step forward and I can, you know, keep attacking them from afar. Unfortunately here, like I said, their defense is very, very high, so I'm barely causing any damage. But, let's say it's another place where the defense is low. You can actually cause quite a bit of damage just doing this kind of back and forth. Of course, the number of arrows you have is limited, so you can't like do that forever. But, having said that, you can probably take out maybe 50 soldiers just doing this trick um, and for, you know, it accumulates. So 50 soldiers there, 50 there, it's already 100, maybe 150. That's a huge, huge advantage when you're fighting them, right? So, yeah, basically that's what you do. Uh, you have to defeat the leader. If you defeat the leader in the battle, which is always Legion 1, okay, you will win the battle. And uh, usually the other units, if they have somewhere to run away, uh, they will try to do that. But from time to time, you have a chance to capture them, which again, in this case, is, hey, three units, great. Uh, in the case of uh, an attack like this, where they don't have anywhere to run, uh, I believe that the units, the other units, are automatically captured. So that's a lot of free troops. That's kind of what you're trying to do here, okay? Um, that's pretty much it, really. I think I went through all the menus. Okay, so just before I talk about the Steam version, I just wanna, uh, this, I changed scenario, so it's, it's the Chinggis Khan scenario, and I chose Japan here. Uh, if you click on Info, uh, you can click on Generals, and here it will let you see, well, okay, actually we don't need to, to do that. We can click on Home Base, and uh, click on Governor. Okay, so now it will show you the characteristics of your leader. Okay, so Minamoto, for example, um, I'm not really sure this is very historical, but you can see that his age is 14. That's very good because the game has kind of a time limit in that, you know, you, again, you need your, your princess to be at least 10 years old to get promoted into the army, okay? So you have to bear that in mind. And after a certain age, um, I guess they're not as fertile anymore. So you really need to hurry and make uh, a lot of babies like between, I don't know, 15 to 30. I'm not sure when it starts to be possible in the game. Anyway, that's one thing. Uh, the body points, this is actually his kind of health points. So again, as he ages, when he gets older, he's gonna start saying things like, oh, my back hurts. And uh, you know, he's gonna lose health points, uh, which sucks because you know, every command you choose in the game requires action points. So if you have less of them, uh, you can issue less orders. So the more health points you use, the worse it gets for you. And at some point, you're just wishing sometimes, 
I just want this guy to die already because, you know, he has like six body points or something like that. You can't do anything with that, really. And you're just waiting for him to die uh, to get uh, to install a princess governor. And that sometimes just doesn't happen. The game just keeps them alive forever and ever and ever. So that's one thing. So uh, finally, if you look at the characteristics, I just go ahead and come back here for a second. Uh, so politics is how many uh, body points you use on actions. Uh, if your politics is A, which is amazing, uh, you're gonna consume the least amount of points on the actions. So you can do a bunch of stuff if you have politics A, and especially a high body count. Uh, war is obviously useful in war. I think it determines how much damage you do and stuff like that. So again, he has C out of E, right? Um, it, it's, it's very average. It's not great. You really want at least B. Uh, of course, preferably A, but A is pretty rare. Uh, leader is C. I think leader is also used in battle. So if your units become disorganized in battle, Remember that option to revive? Well, I think it depends on your leader's ability. So if it's C, it's not very good. Of course, if it's A, you have a very high chance to recover all your units very quickly. And uh, finally, Charm B. I'm, I'm not sure what it does, but maybe it's for diplomacy. I In pretty much all Koei games, it's useful to have a high Charm charisma also sometimes. Uh, to recruit somebody or to form alliances or do something like that. So I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay, I think now I covered pretty much everything in the game and I'm gonna now mention the Steam version. So now we're just gonna briefly, very briefly look at the Steam version. Now, uh, for some reason, I couldn't full screen it because if I full screen it, it becomes gray. I'm not sure why. It might be because of my... Uh, video drivers, which I have not updated for a while. Anyway, the first thing I will say about this is that, yeah, it's really not very different from the original DOS version. Graphically, not very different, etc. Uh, the music, I, I really don't like the new arrangements they did here. It, it sounds very, especially when you go into China, it sounds like uh, ear torture, really. It, it's really bad. Like, I don't know what they did, but they just screwed it up. Anyway, the music is not good, but what I want to show you is just a one extra menu that you do not find in the DOS version. And it's actually, this is all in Japanese, obviously, but I believe it's here and you go into family. This is family. Now, the next option here, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, maybe it's because you have different wives or something like that. Anyway, I'm gonna choose the first because that's Borte and that's the one I know. So you go here. And this is only like in the Steam version, okay? It doesn't exist in the DOS version at all. So I guess this is her. Yeah, it's her. And uh, you know, they say something. I don't know what it is, unfortunately. I don't speak Japanese. And here you have a bunch of options you can pick. So the first option is uh, you can say something nice to her, uh, kind of praise her in a way. And you're trying to, so this is your body points here, okay? Um, as you do stuff here, it's gonna need energy, so your energy is gonna decrease, right? Uh, but you need to raise this bar, so this is her heart bar, uh, you need to raise it to the maximum. Uh, if it reaches the maximum, I guess you guys have sex, and that's great because remember, you need to make babies in this game. Alright, the second option is, uh, you try to impress her. Uh, kind of by boasting a, a little bit uh, how great you are, etc. Uh, next one is 
just kind of go for her feelings more, like say, I love you. This actually works really well, if it works. Uh, it can raise the bar by like over 50%. I will try that in a second. Let's see if it works. Next one is give gifts. So again, I don't know how it works in this game. Maybe it's like Romance of Three Kingdoms 2, where from time to time, when you uh, invade, occupy certain territories, you gain certain items, like a sword or a book or something like that. Maybe it's like that here, so you can give her something. Uh, finally, you can you confide. Confide. You share info with her. I'm not really sure what that does, but anyway. Uh, and the final option is you give up and you go to bed. So, uh, let's choose this one. And again, there's more options here. I don't know what it is exactly, but I'm going to choose the first one. Um, so, she's smiling. Obviously, she's pretty happy. And... Okay. So, as I said, uh, the bar raised... Uh, that, that's my paper of translations, by the way. Uh, as you can see, the bar went up by 50%. So you do that twice and uh, you get 100% and that's what you're trying to do. So as far as I know, this is only available in uh, the Steam version, okay? So yeah, if you want a, a few more cutscenes here and there, you know, check this version out. But for me, like the music is not good and the rest of the game is really identical. And... Uh, of course, the Super Nintendo version looks a little bit different. The Super Nintendo version looks like this. Uh, so it's definitely more cartoony. Um, the mechanics are very similar, though. And um, yeah, it's basically just whatever you prefer. All right, and that's it. This is Cengiz Khan 2 on DOS mostly and also a bit on Steam. And I also showed you a little bit on what it looks like on the Super. My personal favorite is probably the DOS version because it's it has the whole game and uh, you know the music is the original soundtrack um, the Steam version like I said I really didn't like the new music arrangements it's, it's, it's kind of too much I don't know they amplified certain noises which I wish they didn't um, yes it has that dating me mechanic but I mean really it's it's not a big deal um, it can be a very long game because it depends on, you know, what you do. You have to be careful with your children as well. You have to make sure that you always have somebody young uh, to take over. Uh, because again, it, sometimes you are in a situation where, you know, your next in line is like 40 years old or something. And if he becomes a leader, you really need to start making babies as soon as possible. Because remember, again, it takes 10 years. So even if you have a son immediately, uh, you're going to be like 50 already by that point. There's a high chance you're going to get older and lose body points. So be careful. Uh, but yeah, this is it. Uh, this was kind of a how to play video. I'm going to try to do more of these in the future. I really enjoy making these, by the way. Uh, PC retro stuff. I don't see a lot of that on YouTube. So if you enjoy what I do, please drop a like. Uh, feel free to comment, of course. And, you know, share with your friends, because a lot of people have played these games in the past. They have not seen them since the 90s. And so it's a lot of nostalgia for people, which I want to bring back. So anyway, uh, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you around. Otaku Ops, signing off.
Mm.